Hello everyone, so if you're studying networking, you might have heard the term access port or trunk port before. But do you know what each one does? Well in this video we're going to be going over the differences between them, so let's get started. So as you can see here, we have four computers with two different VLANs. Each computer is connected to a switch, and these switches are not connected to each other yet. So the port connecting the computer to the switch will be an access port. The reason being is that an access port only allows one VLAN at a time. So in this instance right now, this computer in VLAN 10 cannot communicate with this computer over here in VLAN 10 because these switches are not connected. If we wanted to connect these two switches, we have set a couple different options. So if we wanted this computer to be able to talk to this computer, we could add a link in VLAN 10 and then they would be able to communicate. But the issue with this is now this computer in VLAN 20 can't talk to this computer in VLAN 20. So in order to do that we would have to add another link for VLAN 20. As you can see, if we do this a lot it will really cause some issues because we could have 100 VLANs on one side that we would need to let go across the switch. So we, we couldn't have 100 links between two switches. So we solve this issue with a trunk link. What a trunk link does is allows multiple VLANs to traverse one port or one link on the switch. So this is useful in this, in this scenario because we can essentially combine these two links into one so that only one link will allow both VLANs. So that's the main difference between a trunk port and an access port is that a trunk port allows more than one VLAN. So now that you know what the basic difference between a trunk port and that's this port is, how does a trunk port work? Well a trunk port will insert a VLAN tag so that it knows which VLAN the, the frame belongs to. So when this computer over here sends something to this computer on this side, the switch will get it in this port and since it came in on a port in VLAN 10 and that's this port, it knows that it must belong to that VLAN. So then when it forwards it out of this port, it will add this information into the frame so that this switch knows what VLAN it belongs to also. And then when this switch forwards it on to this computer, it will strip the tag back off because it knows it belongs to VLAN 10. Once again, it go back to the beginning, an access port only has one VLAN. So if a switch receives something in that port, it knows that it belongs to that VLAN. But how do we know what port a VLAN belongs to? Well, we configure it. So now let's move on to the CLI configuration to see how we configure an access port and a trunk port. All right, so now we got our CLI pulled up and we want to start configuring. So the ICC on the left, each switch one is switch one, switch two, switch two. VLAN 10-1 is the top left, VLAN 10-2 is the top right, and so on with VLAN 20. All right, so first off, what we want to do is we want to put each computer into a, an access port with the VLAN set. So first off, let's put this computer, top left, into VLAN 10. So we'll go and switch one, we'll say config T, then we'll say interface GI01, and then switch port, access VLAN 10. All right, now we want to put the bottom left computer into VLAN 20. So we'll do the same thing, but we'll say VLAN 20. Okay, now that those two computers are into their relative into their VLANs, then we'll do the next side. So on switch two, we'll do the same thing. Alright, now that switch two is configured, we shouldn't have any communication between each VLAN because the middle link hasn't been configured yet, so it's still on VLAN 1 by default. So if we go to this computer up here, which is 10.0.0.1, if we try to ping the other side, which is 10.0.0.2, we should not receive a response. And as you can see, we don't receive anything back. So let's put this middle link into VLAN 10 and see if that works. So we'll go to switch 1, and we'll say int GI03, which is the the middle link between the switches, and then we'll say switch port access VLAN 10. And we'll do the same thing on switch 2. 
All right, and now let's see if our computer campaigned. All right, now that you see it campaigned, but now that VLAN 10 is working, VLAN 20 is still not working. So in order to get VLAN 20 working, we would either have to add a new link between the two switches, like we said before, or we can make it a trunk link and allow both VLANs. So we'll, do the, we'll make it a trunk. So in, we'll go back to interface GI03, which is the middle link. Instead of saying switch port access VLAN, we'll say switch port mode trunk. First off, we need to say uh, the encapsulation is .1Q because it can support this switch can support ISL or .1Q. ISL is a Cisco proprietary version of .1Q, pretty much. All right, so now we say switch port mode front. Another thing you want to do is specify which VLANs you want to allow across the trunk. So we'll say switch port trunk allowed VLAN 10 and 20. So that will only allow VLANs 10 and 20 across the trunk and it will tag them. If you want to allow a VLAN across the trunk but it not be tagged, then you want to add a native VLAN, which we'll go into in a separate video. So now that we did this on this side, let's go to the other side and repeat the same process. Alright, so now that we did that, we should be able to communicate across this trunk link with VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 now. So first off, VLAN 10 is working, now VLAN 20. And it is also working. So that's how you can make a trunk point on a Cisco iOS device. In this video, you learn the difference between a trunk port and an access port, and some basic configuration using the CLI. If you have any ideas for additional videos, please let me know, and thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.